extensions are checked on. All of these? Extensions. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, extensions. They're all turned on. Okay. Then do you have all the data added in your table of contents? On the side here? Yes. Yes, yes. WV Med UTM eighty three. Yeah. You've got the project raster tool. Uh huh. Right there. Project raster. Here it comes. What do you put in for your input raster? The the Ned. I'm finding my cursor. Ned. And then yeah, it's got the the input coordinate system and then the output data set. That's not the one I want you to click on though. Okay. What I want you to click on is the one below it, the output right, coordinate right. system. Yeah, and uh, when I click on it... And I don't want you to click in the box, I want you to click on this little thing over at the end. Yeah, and, and this is what I get, XY coordinate system and favorites geographic coordinates. Yeah, this yeah. right here. Uh -huh. And if you go to your layers mm -hmm. and you click, there are the layers that you already have loaded right here. Yeah. And you can select the one that you need there or... You can come up here and do these mm -hmm. and work your way down through the list. Oh, but I, I want the 1927. Yes. Yeah, so that all three of them are in the same thing. Yes. So just click OK. Once you've got it selected, you yes. put it in here. Then you'll change this folder location here so you know where it sends it. And then you'll click OK. And, and uh, well, you have to get to make sure that you have the the geographic transformation thing uh, selected there, but that's a, it's going to give you the default. All you got to do is just click on it. So okay. Ned, uh, 1927? I don't know where you're no. into here, but you're not in the right spot. So click on the one that's given you. Mm -hmm. And then click OK. And just? Yeah. Okay. If it tells you what it needs to do, which is go from NAT 83 to NAT 27, that's all you need. It doesn't matter which order it's in. It'll, it works both ways. All right, so now, back to where I was at here. Looking at my data set, I've now got my NAT 27 elevation, and I've got my old elevation. The first thing I'm going to do is remove it, because I like to try to keep my GIS as neat and clean as I can. And then I've got my gap land cover data set and my county boundaries. So, my uh, process at this point is all about reclassifying and selecting stuff. I lost it. The elevation, that file that says 927 ELE, -E, I don't have that. Did you make it? I don't think I made it because that step, I, I got lost. Did yeah, that's you just, why I'm, I'm just going to let you do the video and maybe I no, should just go. Hold on. <laughs> you just ran the project tool, right, yeah. for the raster? Yes. Where did it go? I have no idea. Well, know. when it finishes running, it'll show up in your table of contents. Oh, that's what it is. It's still running. Yes. Just, you got to relax. <laughs> this is a low-stress process. <laughs> it's only stressful when you're almost done and the whole damn thing crashes. That'll make your blood pressure go up. All right, so... I've got to reclassify this, and I've got to reclassify this, so that I can make them ones or zeros. And so how do I do that? A lot of different ways. I'm going to go about it as directly and straight ahead as I can. And so I'm going to go down here and look for spatial analyst, and then I'm going to look for reclass. And I'm going to look for reclassify. And I'm going to select NAD 27 elevation. And I'm going to run this off of the values, which are the elevations. Now, if we think back to the paper, the actual number is like 903 meters. So everything below 903 is a zero. Everything above 903 is a 1. That's my Borlean setup that I'm going to use. And so what I'm going to do, now that I've got this in here, I'm going to go to classify. 
and I'm going to tell it I want two classes. And it automatically pops open the little histogram that shows me where everything's at. I can change this a bunch of different ways, like that. Or I can come up here and go like that. <laughs> Once I've got that, I can click OK, and it comes back over here. Now, if you look at the old values, it's now grouped out 68 to 903 and 903 to 1481. I'm going to take the top one here, because this is too, too uh, not high enough. I'm going to make that a zero. I'm going to take this other data set part here. I'm going to make that a one. And anything that's no data, I'm going to leave it as no data. So once I have all that, I'm going to look down here. I'm going to save myself some pain in the butt by not knowing where I put it to make sure that I've got it in the folder I want, which is there. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Ellie Zero. This is a classic short descriptive Mike Harmon kind of file name. It's elevations that's been zeroed and one. Hit my save button. Gonna gonna click this box here to change missing values to no data. Just in case there's something screwy going on somewhere, I'll be able to see it. I'm going to click OK. It's going to take a little bit. It's going to go over every cell of that raster, and everything that comes up below that number will now have the value of 0. And everything that comes up above that number will have a value of 1. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is start rearranging my layers over here so I can see what I'm working on. I'm going to take my county boundaries and just drag it to the bottom of the list. And right now, I have my first boiling layer. The green is high elevations above 903 meters. The purple is everything below that. That data set is effectively done. So at this point in time, I'm just going to uncheck it so that I don't see it so that I can move on to the next one. And my next one will be my gap land data set. At this time, this elevation data right here, I no longer need that because I've already made this one, so I'm going to remove it as well. I'm trying to keep everything just as neat as I can. Now, is everything in raster now? Everything except for my county boundaries. Okay. Okay. All right, so the next step, I'm going to use the exact same tool again, reclassify under the reclass under spatial animals. And what am I going to input my raster? the uh, 1984 West Virginia Gap. Now here's the, the cool part. I'm going to change this from value to name. And the reason is this has all the different classes that were in there. Now I've been thinking about this and I've decided I'm going to pick three of these categories. Mountain conifer, mountain hardwood conifer, and mountain hardwood forest. You could make an argument for just mountain conifer or just mountain conifer and hard, hardwood. You could also make one for cove forests as well. Bottom line, these squirrels like red spruce and just gen generally just damp forest environments. Um, there is a lot of really interesting stuff out there about these little fellers. I'm going to pick these three. You do not pick the exact same ones I pick, unless for some reason you agree that that's the best three to pick. You can pick any of these, as long as you've got a reason for it. And I'll give you a fair amount of flexibility on what that reason is. If you find a paper somewhere that says they also like sycamore trees and there's a sycamore layer and you want to add that in, go for it. It's is that's there up to you. A number you want us to use, or do how many ever you think it needs? Okay. I'm literally not. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck about it, but no, that's okay. that's the, uh, you know. That can be whatever you want there. So I'm going to start with mountain conifer. I'm going to make that a one, and mountain hardwood conifer. I'm going to make that a one, and mountain hardwood forest. I'm going to make that a one, and everything else in here. I'm going to make zeros.
You are going to send us a video of your own of this, right? Or, or, get, uh, or PowerPoints, right? If I get one made, I will for sure. Oh. Um, all right, so I've set those up. Got those three done. No data are my no data. Where is this going to be saved at? In the right location. And I'm going to call this OK Land because it's the land cover that's OK. I'm going to save it. Change missing values to zero or to no data. I'm going to check that box again. I'm going to click OK. Exact same process I did for the elevation, just different parameters that I selected. It's going to run for a bit, and when it does, it's going to give me another layer. Now, immediately when you look at this, you think, well, that's not quite what we're looking for, is it? Well, let's see what happens here. Something didn't work right. So rather than you know, checking the, look at my symbology here, try to figure out what it is real quickly, very short, and if I can figure it out, I will take care of it. So. Everything from the, from the table of contents there. Add all values back in. Nope, not going to work. All right. If something didn't run right. I'm just going to get rid of it and do it over. Rather than try to figure out what's wrong, I'll just make another one. So again, reclassify. What am I going to reclassify? The gap land cover data set. I'm going to reclassify the name field and I'm going to make everything a zero except for the last three. Sometimes these data sets you have to do some funky stuff with them to make them work. I'm hoping, yeah, it worked this time. That's good. All right, so now I've got this data set here. It kind of looks weird. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pop open my properties and go back to my symbology. And you see I've got this other values, which I'm going to check that box. Oh, uh, that one. Yeah. All right. No data, shrub lanes, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I got Mountain Hardwood Forest, Mountain Hardwood Forest. Come over here and call them what I want to call them. 
before, I can literally go in here and just make the colors go away if I want, but I'll leave that in blue for now. This is my my forest habitat. And the other areas is not habitat. So brown is habitat, green is not, and so on. All right, I'm going to sit down here for a second. My knees hurt. Ugh. Next uh, phase in this is to combine these two data layers, right? Well, I've got my reclassed land. I've got my elevation. I no longer need this one, so I'm going to remove it from my data set. I've got my county boundaries. To combine these layers in raster, it's really easy. You just got to know where to look. Map algebra. Raster calculator. It allows you to take one data set and multiply it by another. And so if I take reclass land and I multiply it by my zero dot elevation stuff, and I make sure I'm in the right location, I'm just going to call this draft one because it may not work exactly like I want and I don't want to waste my good file names. And why didn't you multiply it? I'm multiplying it because everywhere that there's not a, a one, I want it to end up a zero. So the zeros times the ones will give me zeros. Zeros times zeros will give me zeros. Ones times one, ones times ones will give me ones. So that'll give me just my habitat. Okay. So right now it's got the two data sets together and I've got this wonderful layer right up here at the top of this and this. So I'm going to turn these other two layers on for a second because I, I want you to notice what we're looking at here. Alright, so we've got everything going on here. So this is my flying squirrel habitat band. Okay? All the green is not. If I go over here and I turn this layer off, we're going to be looking at the layer right below it, which is the just the forest types, and we'll see how they compare. See, there's a lot more of the forest than there is the habitat. Now I'm going to uncheck the forest land, and I'm going to look at the elevation versus the habitat. So now you see where the habitat is, and if I uncheck that, now we'll get to see the elevation. And you see that the elevation has got some pockets where there's a, a, a reasonable amount of the elevation. But when I turn the, my final layer back on, it doesn't show up because it doesn't have both of these. So I can now, for all intents and purposes, remove those two layers. At this point, I've got my habitat model. This is the 80% mark in what you're trying to do. Um, what I, what I would generally do at this point is I would go through one more reclassification and I'll show you why. I'm going to input my draft one 